What's it like to live in an RV on the water? Today, we're talking about houseboat vacations. Welcome to Vacation Mavens, a family travel podcast with ideas for your next vacation and tips to get you out the door. Here are your hosts, Kim from Stuffed Suitcase and Tamara from We Three Travel. So Tamara, you know, you and I were kind of putting our heads together, trying to come up with things that we could talk about with our listeners. And, you know, we we talked about vacation rentals recently. I know that I'm doing a national park vacation and we've talked a little bit about beaches. And now we are going to talk about kind of a unique type of, you know, vacation, which is houseboat rentals. And this is something I have never done before, but I've definitely seen them a couple of times when we've driven past big lakes. Yeah, it's we were actually looking at staying on a houseboat when we were looking at Amsterdam. Yeah. That was the only place I ever really thought of as like, oh, well, we're going to Amsterdam. You're like you have to stay on a houseboat. Which yeah, we ended up the one that we wanted was booked and we were booked in an apartment. But hey, you know, since we never made it when we go back, maybe we'll try it. But I definitely never really thought about it for a U.S. trip. And it actually you know, when you think about it, like I've seen, I don't know whether it's in movies or TV yeah. shows or pictures, like I've definitely seen that. And I, I, maybe it's cause it's more of a out West, you know, thing. And I, yeah. I don't see it as much, but it sounds fun. It does sound fun. You know, living in Seattle, also the big thing for me, when I think of houseboats, I think of like, you know, sleepless in Seattle is the most popular, but those houseboats that are on right. Lake Union and that's, those are almost like permanent hookups where people are actually living. It's almost like they've just taken over the shoreline to be their house. So it's a little different than these kind of vacations because these you're actually on kind of an RV of sorts that is just floating out on the water. So it's it's a little different than what even in Seattle we think of as houseboats. And even in Vancouver they have houseboats that you can rent and a lot of those are just, you know, it's permanently stationed somewhere. So they've got hookups already hardwired to, you know, land and stuff. So it's a little different than that. Yeah. And here it's like a lot of people have boats, like our good friends have a gorgeous boat, you know, that has, you know, a bedroom and a full oh, yeah. bathroom and shower and all that stuff. And so they spend pretty much all their free time in the summer down on their boat and they'll go, they'll go and they'll moor off of um, like Black Island or over to Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard or go over to Mystic, you know, so they spend, they do like weekend getaways, but on yeah. their boat, you know, yep. even if they don't, they'll go out for the day and, and they'll still sleep on the boat down at the marina. So every time we get to do something with them, which is is not nearly enough, <laughs> it's always so, so fun. Like I love being out on the water, but every time I'm like, oh, it's so much work. Like even if we could afford it, the idea of all, like I just see our friend and all the work he puts into like getting the boat ready and, you know, after each time. So the idea of just being able to rent a boat and not yeah. have to do all that work seems, yep. seems kind of appealing. I think that's, yeah, that's a big key for it, right? Is, you know, even with RVs, sometimes people just want to rent one because, you know, the maintenance on it and having it is a lot. And yeah, I have friends too who have nicer boats that they take out onto, you know, into the sound and into the Pacific Ocean. So it's a little different, but it's, I think you and I both with our, our listeners probably know by now that you and I don't handle motion very well. And I think even you and I could handle a houseboat vacation with some of these. They look like pretty smooth, calm lakes. Yeah, exactly. If I'm just like bobbing a little bit, I'm yeah. good. It's more like the rolling, you know. Exactly. And the moving like really fast. I think if you, you know, you're in a canyon or you're near the shoreline, it wouldn't be an issue at all because you're always kind of having a horizon to look at and stuff. So. But really quickly, before we start talking to Jessica, I thought it would be a good chance to just give our listeners a little bit of ideas of, you know, I was just researching because now that we talked to her, I kind of thought, oh, I wonder, you know, where where can you rent houseboats? And I found there are a couple of cool sites. One that I was drawn to is called houseboating.org. And they have a really cool like destinations map and it shows 29 destinations and definitely West Coast, but then there's a whole bunch on the East Coast, Tamara, actually by you. It looks like through the Midwest is actually where it's a little, you know, empty. But yeah, so it kind of, they've got a map there. And of course, Lake Powell, Lake Mead, Mount Lake Shasta, there's Lake Cumberland and Dale Hollow. 
So, but in the Northeast, you've got Erie Canal. In the Southeast, I guess you can rent some in the Florida Keys and the Everglades. So, I bet you the Erie Canal is probably like a barge. You know, I was thinking about that it's a little bit similar to the barge cruises that we talked about right. earlier this year when we interviewed Dana about the different types of cruising. So, yeah, I bet um, that's a lot like that. Yeah, cause although it sounds like those barges how... move a little faster. She did say they were really slow, but yeah. Yeah, that you could like bike alongside it or something. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Well, you know, you just found out some news about your schooling, right? Yes. Yeah, we are remote learning until, quote, until it's safe to go back to in-person instruction. So no, no end time in sight. So although they are saying that it's going to be much uh, stricter and much different than the emergency, you know, less the emergency teaching that they did at the end of, you know, the spring of spring, summer time. But yeah, they figured some things out. Now. Yeah, but they're going to be doing like daily attendance and daily classes. So I think that's gonna have a difference. Well, you know, a lot of people are going to be in that boat. So I guess if you found a houseboat with good Wi Fi, <laughs> it's yeah. still a, a, a fall option. It's, and apparently it's cheaper then. So. Yeah, exactly. I know. I think I wonder how many, you know, how this whole thing will adjust travel pricing and if families will kind of jump on board of September vacationing a little more. And, you know, that used to be our favorite before the girls got older. It used to be our favorite time to go to Disneyland was at the beginning of September when everybody was starting back to school and not ready to get out of school yet. So, of course, I won't yeah, be going to Disneyland anytime soon. But <laughs> Yeah, it's really tough, right? Because it sounds so appealing. Like, ooh, we don't have to be, you know, st- stuck too much to the uh, school schedule. But then you're like, well, there's a reason for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's really tough, you know. It's but, like it's uh, the best of both worlds. Like your your husband's working at home, working from home. He doesn't have to go into the office. Your kids are home. They can. T- and then you're still like, well, yeah, but you can't travel anymore safely. Yeah. So yeah, if one of you, if you, if some of our listeners live near a lake, then there you go. But, yeah. but you know, otherwise it definitely seems like a very good way to get away from people, you know, as long as you can get there, but you bring your own stuff and get away from people. And it seems like an ideal vacation for this type of time. So I think, you know, let's talk to Jessica and hear more about it. Sounds good. Let's talk to her. So this week we're here with Jessica Averett. She's from Bring the Kids, and she's a Utah-based blogger that focuses on adventure travel for families. She's a mom of five kids, aging from 3 to 13, and is always looking for great adventures together. So Jessica, we're very happy to talk to you about an adventure that I think maybe families are going to be interested in, especially this year. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, there's so many, I think there's a lot of really great, unique ways that families can get out and do really great adventures while also social distancing. Yeah. So Kim and I were just, you know, brainstorming, like what are some other ways that people can safely vacation, you know, this summer and fall. And we thought about houseboats. And when I looked around to see who had an experience, I saw that you actually have had a lot of experience on houseboats. So can you tell us like, when was the last time you took a houseboat vacation and where did you go? So all of my houseboat vacations, except for one, have been at Lake Powell. It's a really, I grew up in Colorado, and so that was a really easy place for us to go because it wasn't super far away. The last time we took a houseboat vacation was about two years ago, and we have another one that's planned for September, so we're heading back really soon. That's awesome. So it sounds like for you, you just went about picking a destination based on something nearby, but do you have any advice maybe from things you've picked up along the way or things you've heard from other people that would help our listeners know, like, how would they find a destination and how would they rent a houseboat? So most houseboats, there aren't a lot of destinations that have houseboats at them. They're usually at really big lakes. I know in the West, the really popular places are to go to Lake Powell and to Flaming Gorge and Lake Mead. And they're all really big lakes. And so basically, you can either go about renting them from the main marinas there, or there are some private parties that rent them out. So it kind of just depends on what sort of amenities you're looking for and how long you're going to be gone. So is it kind of like when you want to go to a certain beach town, you know, you could look on like VRBO or something like that, but otherwise you might want to look for local rental agencies that, you know, specialize in that area or 
do you also find them on like a, a VRBO or a Airbnb? Honestly, probably 90% of people that rent a houseboat do it through a local marina, at least in, in our experience, just because it's a lot easier. Um, renting a houseboat is a lot more complicated than renting, say, you know, someone's house or renting even like a motor home, just because there's a lot of logistics with getting boats in and out of the water and access to them there. And so the easiest, simplest way is to just rent it from a marina. But sometimes, you know, maybe if, you're, if you've got an extra large group, just looking in like classifieds and things like that is where most of them are housed. There's not like a, a great resource like VRBO for houseboats. Got it. So is there, you know, maybe we'll just start and talk about kind of what the experience is like. So what could people expect if they're thinking about staying on the houseboat? What is that actually like? Do you, you know, what's your day look like? Do you move around a lot? Do you drive the boat places? You know, what is it like to kind of live on a houseboat for a while? And maybe, you know, like how long do people typically rent them for? Yeah. Okay. So seriously, staying on a houseboat is one of the coolest vacations you can ever take. Like I am so obsessed with it. My family started doing it when I was probably about 12 and we did it all growing up and we've taken our kids and done it a bunch too, but it's kind of like staying in a really, really big motor home that goes really slow. (laughs) Um, A houseboat goes maybe like six miles an hour on a good day. Wow. So they travel really slow just because they're so big. And so sometimes people will move around, like maybe they'll move a few miles in a day, but typically what people will do is they'll find, maybe they'll go for a week. Um, this is a vacation that you probably need a minimum of four days to do, but so four days to a week is pretty standard. And maybe you would stay at one or two different places. And it's a little bit different than even though it's kind of like a big floating RV, it's a little bit different than that because with an RV, you're going to be looking for a campground or things like that. But with houseboating, you're basically just driving around and looking for a great beach to park your houseboat on. So you're not going to be surrounded by other people. This is one of those places where if you're going on a houseboat trip, you really have solitude. You're on your own. There's not going to be other boats around in most places that you're going. So you can really kind of get off on your own, but you also have all of the the luxuries and the amenities of being on a houseboat. You've got, you know, you've got a nice kitchen, you've got bathrooms, a lot of them, actually, most of them have air conditioning, nice beds, things like that. So it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a really cool combination that in this climate with all the different stuff going on is a really great fit for what people are looking for to get away and be alone. So you started a marina, they're putting it in the water for you, they're gassing it up and getting it all ready, hopefully Mm -hmm. emptying out any of the sewage tanks or whatever, so you don't have any issues when you're on board. (laughs) And then you just, you you just go where you want to go and you just drop anchor. You don't have to, you know, spend an overnight at another marina. Now, do you have to have a a boating license? No, you don't. I mean, (laughs) I think most of them require you to be 21, but for most families who are looking, it's not, it's not an issue. You don't need a special license. But what a lot of people do like to do because houseboats go really slow is most people are going to end up taking some other sort of watercraft with them on their houseboat. Yeah, I was wondering about that, like a dinghy or just other kind of toys. I mean, it really just depends like on what you're looking for. You could just go and you could take your kayaks with you. Mm -hmm. Um, Houseboats have like a totally flat roof. So if you wanted to take a bunch of kayaks or even just like a bunch of floaties and stuff, you can just tie them onto the roof and they're going to just hang out there while you're, while you're driving. Or if you're into like, maybe you really like wave runners or you like water skiing. A lot of people will go and they'll kind of use their houseboat as a home base and then they'll go out water skiing all day long. Mm. Well, how do you water ski? I mean, obviously they're going fast enough. Do they bring another boat as well? Sorry. They'll take They'll take a water ski boat. Thank you for helping me clarify. So (laughs) yeah, they'll have their wave runner or their ski boat. um, And then the houseboat's kind of just a jumping off spot. Hmm. for that. So do they tow the other boat along on the houseboat or do they leave it like at the marina and go back and get it? Or how does that Um, work? No, you can, so you can tow it along with you. A lot of people will just drive it alongside because if you tow it, it makes your houseboat go even slower than it already does. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, most people will kind of just get away from the marina. Um, Sometimes when we've gone, we'll go as far as like 30 miles away from the marina. Other times, 
we've gone really close to the marina, you know, just a mile or two. And both have both have their good and bad things about them. So I would think it would also be helpful maybe if you do have like a jet ski or something to bring along because, you know, I'm thinking if you have it for a week, you're not going to probably meal plan and have all your meals for a week. So maybe being able to take a jet ski over back to the marina and do a little grocery shopping or something, pick up some extra food might be helpful. Yeah, that's always an option. But I mean, most most houseboats will have a fridge and as well as a couple of coolers. Oh, okay. um, so at least Lake Powell and Flaming Gorge are pretty remote areas. So there's not a lot of access to bigger towns to go shopping in. Okay. And so trying to be as self-sufficient as you can is a great idea. Good to know. Are they full, full size fridges or like uh, more like dorm style fridges? Most of them aren't quite as big as like a full size fridge you'd have in your house, but they're not like a mini fridge okay. that you have in a kitchenette. So kind of, just think like a small, a small kitchen fridge yeah. um, that maybe you find in a smaller Airbnb or something. My friends have a boat, you know, not a houseboat, but a boat and they're, they have, you know, a decent size fridge just kind of like blends into the paneling, you know, so mm-hmm. I'm never quite sure exactly how big that is. <laughs> <laughs> so Jessica, when someone is looking to rent, are there certain things that they should look for to make sure the houseboat has? Like, for example, you mentioned some of air conditioning. So I mean, I imagine if that's important to them, make sure you look for that checkbox. But what are some of the other things that you should look for when you're looking through like the listings of what's available? Well, if you are going on a houseboat vacation with kids, the most important thing that you need on your houseboat is a houseboat with a slide off of the roof. <laughs> oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> because if you I've don't seen. have that slide, your kids are going to be so sad when they see everyone else's houseboat with a slide. <laughs> so get the houseboat with the slide. But also some houseboats, especially when you're renting from a, a private person rather than a marina, they'll have special things for families. Like maybe you need a pack and play or a high chair. Some of them will even have like little water safety alarms like you would have with a pool. Mm. Um, So if one of your small kids were to fall in. So you can look for special things like that if you're going with extra young kids and you need some of those extra safety precautions in place. But most most houseboats are pretty similar. It depends on it also depends on how many people you want to sleep. Uh, They probably typically sleep between eight and 12 people, but it's really common for people to go on a houseboat vacation and then also have some people camp. So like if we would go on a houseboat vacation, maybe we would go with two other families and we would take a tent and put some of the kids on the shore for the night and they would just camp on shore and we would just be on the beach in the houseboat. And so that's kind of a nice thing to consider when you're going on a houseboat trip is that you really often can fit more people than the, than it suggests. You just have to get a little bit creative with your sleeping solutions there because there's plenty of room during the day. Yeah. Are those usually like in, are there multiple bedrooms or is it like we sleep this many, like because this thing folds down and this couch folds out or, you know, things like that. Um, it really depends on the houseboat. There's a lot of different configurations. Some of them will just have like maybe one bedroom and then a pullout couch and then a bunk room where it's got like a couple double bed bunks. Yeah. Um, other ones are going to have, I mean, I've been on one that had like four separate bedrooms where everyone had their own space. Hmm. And so if you need, if you need some privacy, you're obviously going to be looking for something like that. Or if you're really open and maybe it's just a lot of kids, you can be a little bit more flexible. And you said that you can pull right up onto the beach. So is it like a flat, like a pontoon kind of bottom? Yeah. So a houseboat is like an enormous pontoon boat. Okay. So you're basically just pulling it up on the beach and just hanging out there. It's super fun. So are there any other tips or things that families should keep in mind if they're considering a houseboat vacation? I think that my best tip for people when they're going on a houseboat vacation is to go with someone else. It's always so much more fun to have another family with you. And also it makes it a lot easier adult wise. If you've got a few people to, to drive the boat. Another tip that I have is, although it's really tempting to get really secluded is to stay somewhere where you do have cell phones reception on our last trip. One of my, one of my sons had an accident. He broke his arm and we needed to call wow. the emergency room. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and so we were really grateful that we hadn't gone really far off the beaten path. And, you know, things like that happen. And so it's, 
if you're in a houseboat and it's driving really slow, it's important that you've kind of got that link to the outside world there. So are there like ambulance boats that can come help you? <laughs> in our case, we were only about two miles outside of the marina. Okay. And we had another boat with us. I don't know of rescue boats because I haven't, thankfully haven't had to use one yet. Yeah. You think about it, like there's the Coast Guard, you know, but <gasps> yeah. they're not, you know, on lakes, you know, so I don't know how things go with lakes. Kim, do you know you, you live near lakes? We have our police patrols our lake, but it's on random hours, just mostly when it's busy to kind of be checking that everyone has life jackets and, you know, people are not speeding and being unsafe. So it's not like a it's not like a 24 seven type emergency yeah. situation. And yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I think on those big lakes, it's an interesting thing. I was thinking of just even cell service. Like, do you need to have a sat phone or do some of them come like Wi-Fi equipped with cell data? I don't know, because you'd think it's, you know, you want to be able to maybe if you have kids get in contact quickly with there is an emergency or something. Well, and in a lot of these places, you're in a lot of canyons at least yeah. out in the West, like you're in canyons. And so not giving into the temptation to go really far up a canyon, even though it's gorgeous, <laughs> but maybe just staying a little bit closer to the marina so you can have that, that access in case there is a problem. I kind of love the idea of having a boat with you. So like, but we don't have a boat. I mean, Kim has a boat, but I don't know if you would <laughs> want to drive it down to, uh, you know, to Lake Powell or whatever. But do you like the marinas, I imagine, would also rent that kind of stuff to go with it? Yeah, yeah, you can rent, you can rent, you know, your water ski boats, you can rent your wave runners, you can even rent like tubes and water skis to pull behind. And so that makes it that makes it a lot easier because you can still have a great big boating vacation without having to invest in your own boat. I'm going to ask a quick question then like price wise. It sounds like, yeah, <laughs> I was thinking, you know, like what should families be expecting then on price points for what does a vacation like this cost if you have any kind of estimate? Okay. So the cost of a, of a houseboat vacation really depends on the boat that you're getting for a three or four day trip to get a houseboat. You're probably starting at about $2,000, okay. but if you're going for a week and you've got a really luxury houseboat that could easily get up to $10,000 or more. Wow. So it's not a cheap vacation. But that's another advantage of taking of going in with another family is you can split the cost and then help minimize that a little bit there, too. Yeah, it sounds like a nice like multi-gen kind of thing, too. Yeah. We actually so when we started going on houseboat trips, we did it with my entire extended family and we would have tons of cousins and aunts and uncles and my grandparents. And it's a great thing because everyone can find something that they want to do at the lake. I mean, even little kids can just play on the shore or they can go for, they could go for little hikes up a side Canyon, or they could go water skiing, or they could just paddle around in a kayak. So it's really something that can appeal to a really wide age range. That's awesome. I have this vision in my mind. I'm just thinking of like lakes, you know, by where I live in the, the Northeast and, you know, they're colder you never quite know what's in there. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm thinking that like Texas, it's like water moccasins, you know, yeah, I remember so. us being in Maine and they're like, oh yeah, there are leeches in that lake. And Tamara and I are like, we're out. <laughs> we're not going for a swim. I don't care how hot it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like what, what's the water like in the, you know, the places that you've mentioned? So if you're going to be up by, you know, say Flaming Gorge, the water is pretty chilly all year round. Lake Powell is just a dream. If you haven't been to Lake Powell before, just imagine what it would look like if someone filled the Grand Canyon with water. Mm. It's just stunning. So you have all these twisting side canyons. And in Lake Powell, if you were to go maybe in May, the water would still be kind of cold. But by June, it's warming up. And my favorite time to go is September because kids are back in school. It's not mm -hmm. crowded at all. The air is cooling down a little bit more, but it still feels really warm. And the water is an amazing temperature. Like you could just swim all afternoon and not get cold. Wow. And very similar with Lake Mead as well. I wonder if it's big like in the Ozarks too. I'm thinking of this, the show Ozark, you know, yeah. it, like it seems like, you know, Lake of the Ozarks, seem, there's, it's so big that you would have 
um, you would space think. to have houseboats. I don't, I don't remember growing up thinking of that way. But another thing I was just thinking when you said like Lake Powell and Lake Mead, aren't both of those are reservoir lakes from dams, right? So I wonder if there's mm-hmm. anything like, I wonder if it's a a related thing, like maybe there's something like about, Palmers. yeah, like maybe there's something about it being a reservoir lake that makes it better for, you know, that kind of thing, as opposed to just a massive, you know, like salt lakes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just Well, like, and I think about like the lakes up in New York and, you know, I remember taking a, a water taxi on one of the Finger Lakes and she's like, well, I can't go, you know, very far today because of the wake. And it's like, you don't really think about how rough the water can get yeah. on a lake, but it can. So, do, I mean, do you usually, Jessica, is it usually pretty calm and flat when, where you go? Because that, I mean, I get seasick, so it's like you wouldn't want one <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. too, too rough. So, like I said, like most of the time when I've done a houseboat, it's at Lake Powell. And the way that Lake Powell works is it's, I think it's about 160 miles long. And there's one main canyon that goes all the way down. And then there's a bunch of side canyons. And the main canyon, especially in the afternoon and evening, can get really, really choppy. And you're getting a lot of waves out there. But the side canyons are almost always much calmer. I mean, you could water ski on glass all day in some of those. Mm, Yeah. I know that it just depends on where you're going. And if you're pulling up on a beach at night, like that's going to be, you know, it's not going to be a problem sleeping then. I would think it's pretty. pretty Yeah. Well, and because your, your boat is, is kind of anchored to the shore there. So really you're not feeling it much at all. I know that I, I know another place that I was just thinking of is like Mount Shasta. That area is really popular with houseboat rentals. And I remember we were in another near last and volcanic and I'm blanking on the name of the lake right now that we were in, but it was, it was really calm, even though it's a large lake. So it must be something about that, but I, I would, I would be tempted to try it because I don't think it's like the roughness. Maybe. Yeah, I would try it. It definitely sounds, it sounds really cool. Yeah. So Jessica, why don't you give us some tips, you know, if people are going to go, what are some of the must things that they should pack and bring along? Cause I'm sure that it's like any other vacation, there's some unique things that people need to remember or they don't want to forget because especially if you're going to be all the way out there, you don't want to go, Oh, we forgot sunscreen or something, but yeah. What are some things that people should be sure to pack? Um, yeah, right there. That's the biggest one is sunscreen, but also you should take some aloe too, because when you're on a lake for a week straight, someone inevitably is going to get a sunburn. So make sure you've got some aloe with you. And another thing that has really been convenient for us when we go is we'll just take a small line of clothesline, like clothesline rope Mm -hmm. and some clothespins because everyone is always in the water, always getting wet. And it's so nice to have to be able to string up a clothesline to dry all those swimsuits and those clothes and all those things so that you're not feeling like you're always in damp clothes. Mm -hmm. That's a good tip. And are the houseboats usually equipped the way a vacation rental home would be? Or do you need to like bring your linens and do you need to bring like all of your paper products and stuff like that as well? So most of them are going to, they're going to have all the dishes and things that you need for the kitchen. And they'll have some very basic life jackets. Like think the orange ones that are like the U shape that just go over your head and clip around your waist. So if you want nicer life jackets, you're going to want to take that something a little more comfortable. Depending, it really depends on the rental on whether or not they have linens or not. And kind of how nice of a houseboat you're getting. Some of them will just have bunks and you're going to take sleeping bags. Mm -hmm. And other ones are going to have full linens on them. And it really just kind of depends on the price point that you're getting into there. So just another thing to look for, I guess, (laughs) as you're Mm -hmm. doing your rental. Well, we have one more question for you, and that is a question that we ask all of our guests, and that is, what do you wear when you travel? Do you have any particular brands of clothing or shoes or anything that you love? Yes. I have an old pair of Columbia pants that I wear all the time. They're my absolute favorite. So I always wear those on travel days, and I almost always am wearing my Choco sandals. Mm-hmm. Those sounds like they would be good for being on a lake too. That's what I'm thinking. They're perfect. That sounds great. So why don't you tell our listeners about, you know, your next trip? You mentioned that you're doing another houseboat vacation in September, which is one of your favorite times to do them. But, you know, also let our listeners know where they can find you online in case they want to kind of follow along on your trip. Yeah. So like I said, we are going, we are going to Lake Powell again in September, hopefully without any broken bones this time. (laughs) 
Um, and we've got a few national park vacations coming up before then. Like we're going to Yellowstone and hopefully Zion as well. But yeah, if you want to find us online, we are at, we are bring the kids and you can find us on Instagram and Facebook. And our URL is bring dash the dash kids.com. That's a hard one to remember. So just Google it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and we'll link to those in the show notes. So if people awesome. can just go over to the website and find those. Well, thank you so much. You've gotten me excited about a new kind of trip and hopefully our listeners as well. And we really appreciate the insight from someone that's you know done so many of these. Well, thanks for having me today. Thanks, Jessica. Well, we're back and, you know, talking to Jessica reminded me of something that I've been using recently because she mentioned aloe and I always used to use aloe when I get a sunburn, but you know how it's like so sticky Mm -hmm. and everything. So I've, I really like the Sunbum products and oh, yeah. they have this cool down lotion oh, yeah. and I love it. It's supposed to like, you know, cool down your skin. So I don't know if it's like as strong because I haven't gotten like a burn burn, but I've right. put it on, you know, after being in the sun, it smells so good and it just feels like so moisturizing and so soothing on your skin. So it's That's just nice. called cool down from Sunbum. So I love the I don't way know. Sunbum stuff smells. So yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's so yummy. Yeah. So anyway, I just figured I'd mention that because it's a product I happen to love. Yeah, definitely. Sounds good. Well, everyone, thanks for joining us for another week here and we will chat with you again soon. 